Coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, it's pretty funny how two dominant performances, and I would say fairly dominant performance by the Silver and Black through two preseason games, can change the mind of many of what they believe the Raiders will do in 2023. That plus a whole lot more comes up on Tuesday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast for August 22nd, 2023. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn wind is a Raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And won. And won. And won. And won. And welcome here, Raider Nation, to another edition of the Lockdown Raiders Podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts to get the latest edition of the show as soon as it becomes available. And of course, as always, if you're checking us out on YouTube, we appreciate you. It's really grown in a major way on YouTube, and that's because of you, Raider Nation. So again, we appreciate you, and we appreciate my man Ari. He does a great job each and every day getting us up on YouTube, making sure we're looking good and we're sounding good, and takes a ton of pride in his work. And I love the fact that he's willing to go the extra mile to make sure the show is really good up on YouTube. So definitely appreciate you, Ari, at Ari Produces on Twitter. You can check him out. You can also check me out as well on Twitter, at your boy Q254. Your Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line is 707-654-4693. And, of course, we'll get those calls and texts coming up in segment number three. And as I mentioned, you can hit me up on Twitter at your boy Q254. And we got a longtime listener that hit me up on Monday night and sent me a direct message. So I definitely want to get that on the show as well. So we'll actually lead off segment number three with that tweet. Then we'll get to your calls and texts. That's segment number three. Segment number two, we're going to talk all things Aiden O'Connell. And I know I did this on Monday, but this time I have an opportunity with Dane Brugler from The Athletic. He joined my radio show, Unnecessary Roughness, on Raider Nation Radio 920 on Monday and talked all things Aiden O'Connell. And Dane Brugler, if you're not familiar with him, he's a draft guru, right? He does a really good job at breaking down players, uh, always prepares the draft guide called The Beast that he puts out each and every year. And it is a great draft guide. I really do like it. It's my go-to. Right. Whenever I need to go ahead and, and refresh on a, a player or maybe even look up a player that I don't know. Right. Or maybe someone calls in and is like, hey, Q, you should pay attention to this guy. Maybe I'm not familiar with them. I'll go to the beast and check out the information because I guarantee Dane Brugler will have him covered. So uh, for Aiden O'Connell, he had Aiden O'Connell pe- pegged as a fourth round pick in the beast. And this was before the Raiders drafted him, had him in the fourth round. So I had him on my radio show to talk about why he was confident that he was around a fourth round pick, plus a whole lot more how he fits in with head coach Josh McDaniels and what he could turn into potentially in the NFL. So that conversation comes up in segment number two. Here in segment number one, news and notes of the day before we get to any of that, want to talk about the title sponsor of the show, which is Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Tell you a lot more about them coming up after segment number one of today's show. But let's go ahead and jump into the news and notes. And uh, I said it off top, man. It's it's pretty funny how the Raiders go through two preseason games and look really good, put up 34 points in both games. The defense looks really dominant. Uh, the, the backup quarterback, Aiden O'Connell, the guy that's gotten the most time on the grass, has looked really good through two games. And all of a sudden... There's outlets out there that are believing in the silver and black. And, you know, it's funny. Before preseason game number two, I actually had Maurice Jones-Drew, who's part of the Rams broadcast. He was on the pregame show. Uh, I had him as a guest on the show. And he was a guy that was very critical of the direction that the Raiders were going. Uh, under uh, head coach Josh McDaniels. When the whole Derek Carr situation went down, he was very open and honest that he didn't like what the Raiders did. He didn't like the direction, uh, sitting Derek Carr down and having the guy that had been there nine years, no longer part of the organization, and just didn't have a real good idea. So when he was a guest on the pregame show on Saturday before the Rams game, I asked him, you know, hey, I know you weren't a big fan of the moves that the Raiders made. Now that you look at it, you've seen a preseason game under your belt, you kind of see how it's all developed. What do you think of the direction that the Raiders are going? Here's his answer. You know, uh, at first I was obviously a little uh, frustrated with the Derek Carr thing as a Raiders fan and a player and a guy that played with Derek when he was a rookie and saw what he was able to do for this franchise, you know, going from Oakland to Vegas and keeping him in contention, going to the playoffs, uh, you know, taking him to the playoffs the one year where he gets hurt against the Colts and then obviously against the Bengals. That was always tough to see. But as you see this roster start to unfold, uh, it, it looks like it's, it could be a contender, right? You're going to need some, You're going to need a piece. 
right? I don't know. I don't know if we talk about that piece still in Vegas, but <laughs> Josh Jacobs is going to need to right. come back to be able to run the ball a little bit. Jimmy G plays better with a strong running game, as you saw that with San Francisco. He's a winner. If he has a running game, he'll get you in contention, and he'll be able to make a play in the fourth quarter. Um, and I think that's you know what obviously he's done in his, his career and what what kind of the had the Raiders excited about him, and plus they were familiar with him as well. But uh, when you look at it, you know. Devontae Adams is going to do his thing. Hunter Renfro is going to be a baller for you. Jacoby Myers is going to make plays. Uh, Keelan Cole's a guy I know from Jacksonville that's been a really good player. Uh, Austin Hooper went to the great De La Salle High School. I know you guys in Vegas know about him. We went down there and gave Bishop yep. Gorman some work. <laughs> you know, um, and he's, a, he's, a, he's a classmate of one of my, my good friends as well, so it's always good to see that. But when you look at it as a whole, you look at the, the defensive pieces and everything, there, there, there's something there. And, and I think, just like anything else, it's – how quickly you can improve throughout the season and not make the same mistake twice. And, and to be honest, last year, I mean, they had the Super Bowl champions down to the wire in that first game. They should have won it. So uh, I know they're excited about it, and I know David Long Jr., who's been with the Rams, he's a really good corner. So that, they got some guys there that they're trying to figure out defensively, but if they can figure it out, they'll be tough to stop. So MJD right there, Maurice Jones-Drew, longtime NFL running back. Uh, obviously, he's been a part of the Raiders organization, as he mentioned, played with Derek Carr, and, you know, is starting to think and believe in the direction that the Raiders are going. And look, he's not the only one. I actually have about a five-minute clip that Colin Cowherd had on the herd. He's a guy that's been very critical of the Raiders, and I know that a lot of times Colin Cowherd will say one thing, then all of a sudden he'll say something else, you know, a few weeks later or a month later or so on and so forth, whatever. It, things will change, and I'm okay with that because he mentions it all the time that, you know, as – as more information rolls in or as he's able to see a few games or whatever the case may be, check out an organization, he, he you know, reserves the right to change his mind. And I, I'll do that, right? I mean, I didn't think that Aiden O'Connell had too much. I thought he was going to be a glorified backup at best. And right now, I mean, I can't get enough of watching him. I've been enjoying watching Aiden O'Connell and seeing him develop, and I don't know what he's going to turn into, if that means he's going to be a franchise quarterback at any point. But I'll tell you what, I didn't think that we'd be talking about Aiden O'Connell as much as we are. So, I mean, things could change. And I'm okay with that as long as you're willing to say, hey, I was wrong about that guy. And I've done that plenty of times. I have no problem with that. I know a lot of people don't like to admit that, but I don't have any problem with that. If I don't know, I don't know. And, and if I thought I knew and I proved to be wrong, so be it. So uh, Colin Cowherd even came out uh, just the other day, matter of fact, on Monday, and was saying that, you know, the, the Raiders check all the boxes. I'd love to play the audio, but it's like five minutes long. He said, you know, he, they, they check all the boxes – to be a 10-12 to 12 win team in the NFL based off what he's seen through two preseason games, right? And Aiden O'Connell was a lot of the conversation that he had, and also the defense flying around was a lot of the, the conversation he had. Josh McDaniels is the head coach. He all of a sudden was talking positively about him. So it's funny, again, two preseason games, you don't want to get too high or too low over the preseason. He mentions that in, in what he was talking about, his little uh, dialogue that he had on the herd, but still believes that, okay, the Raiders are checking off these boxes, and that was uh, a surprise to him. And, you know, it's funny. I did this uh, Locked On NFL uh, podcast on the Locked On uh, Podcast Network. We do it each and every year, the ultimate division crossover. So host of the Locked On Chiefs, Locked On Broncos, Locked On Chargers, of course, Locked On Raiders. We all get together, and we have a discussion about the division. And normally it's kind of a, a conversation. We go back and forth, all four of us. This time it was, you know, it was a Q&A session. It was really narrated, and there was different questions that they had. Who is the best quarterback in the division? Which team is most likely to make the playoffs that missed last season? And so, of course, uh, everyone picked uh, the Broncos and not the Raiders, and that's okay. I think the Chiefs guy might have picked the Raiders. Uh, but anyway, you know, it was it was one of those where it was more more leaning towards the Broncos than the Raiders, which is fine. Which team will finish last in the division? Everybody picked the Raiders. That's cool. Um, I, I said that there could be a chance, right, depending on how things go, there could be a chance that they, they finish last or they could end up winning 10 games. And I've said that before here on the show. Which team will finish first in the division? Everyone said that it was the Chiefs. Uh, of course, there was a little charge of love there, but for the most part, it was all the Chiefs. Uh, and then what is the national assumption about your team that's wrong? And this is the question that I really enjoyed because my big thing was uh, everyone's saying that the Raiders roster um, didn't get better. It actually got worse in the offseason, and I don't agree with that. I just think that there's not a lot of sexy names that everybody is gravitating to like it was a year ago when it was Devontae Adams being traded for Chandler Jones. Of course, Derek Carr and Devontae Adams were going to rekindle that Fresno State magic. All that good stuff was going to happen. Well, we all know it didn't. 
right? There was a lot more big names that were brought in last season, where this year, even if you're looking at the draft, the only big name that they really got, uh, Tyree Wilson and then Michael Mayer, who dropped to him in the second round. But yeah, those were the two out of nine guys that actually had big names that people were like, okay, pretty uh, excited about those guys. You know, the, the, the Raiders picked some really good players in the first couple of rounds. Then all of a sudden, you know, when they go and get a Trey Tucker, when they go get a Byron Young, when they go get an Aiden O'Connell, when they go and get a Ja'Korian Bennett, right? It was not a whole lot of, man, those are great players. It was more like, okay, those are solid guys, but all right, whatever. You know, Marcus Epps, free agent. Robert Spillane, free agent. You know, Jacoby Myers. Nobody was just, you know, singing the praises of Dave Ziegler. But I, in my opinion, think that the roster got better for what they're attempting to do. No, Darren Waller's not there. I get it. I know Josh Jacobs isn't signed yet, but I do believe he'll be there sooner rather than later. Right? And, and everyone talked about the quarterback position, Derek Carr. And I think he's a damn good quarterback. I really do. Uh, it just wasn't what Josh McDaniels wanted. He wasn't, obviously he fell out of favor with, uh, with coach McDaniels and you know, now he's got his guy in there. So as I've said so many times, his guys are in place. Now he's got to go out there and do what he does, but for what the Raiders want to do, I believe that they got better as a team. So it's obviously remains to be seen. They've got to go do it on the field, but that was my big uh, takeaway. What is the national assumption about your team? That's wrong. And like I said, many other outlets are talking pretty positively about the Raiders right now. As a matter of fact, former Raider quarterback MVP Rich Gannon, who was on the on the broadcast on the TV side of things on uh, on Saturday, and he's been doing the TV side of things with uh, with Jason Horowitz and Matt Millen. Uh, he was talking about the Raiders as well and where he thinks that they can, you know, or how he's feeling about the Raiders heading into 2023 season. Of course, Rich Gannon represented the 33rd team.com. This is what he had to say. Check it out. I am cautiously optimistic about my Raiders in 2023, and here's why. Had a great sit-down conversation with Jimmy Garoppolo on Saturday afternoon. I just think there's a certain comfort level with Jimmy Garoppolo. He's got a history with Josh McDaniels from their time together. He is a different player than when he left New England. If he can stay healthy, he's going to have a special season. Devontae Adams is terrific. Michael Mayer, the young tight end, I think he's got a chance to be a special player. I think the key is, can they get Josh Jacobs back? If they can get him in here in the next week or so and get him up and running, I think the Raiders can be pretty special on offense. The, the biggest concern, obviously, with the Raiders is where are they going to be defensively? I think they've improved at all three levels of their defense. But here's the key for the Raiders defensively. Chandler Jones has to play better than he did a year ago. And Tyree Wilson, he looks like he's got a chance to be a pretty special player. If they can get some juice and productivity off the opposite edge from Max Crosby, I think the Raiders can get a whole lot better defensively. And a better Raider defense may mean twice as many wins as we saw a season ago. So there you go. He's feeling positive about his Raiders, his words, not mine, right? And, and again, he, he should feel pretty positive. He's a guy that's around the organization quite a bit, so he kind of knows the ins and outs. He has the conversations with not only Jimmy G, he has the conversation with Josh McDaniels, with Dave Ziegler. So he knows a lot about the team and the direction that they're going in. You know, he's starting to feel really positive. So you heard from MJD. You heard from Rich Gannon. Colin Cowherd, again, as I mentioned, has a nice five-minute piece on uh, on the Raiders and, and how they check the boxes of a potential 10- to 12-win team. And that's not what they were talking about not too long ago. Matter of fact, I believe you check out FanDuel.com, which is a sponsor of the Locked On Podcast Network. Uh, even the win total has moved up just a little bit. Not a lot, but just a little bit for the Raiders in 2023. So I just find it to be interesting. I'm not mad at it. But it's funny how two preseason games, who everyone says don't overreact to a preseason game, is all of a sudden got different outlets out there and different folks out there talking pretty publicly about the Raiders being a good team. I like the fact that they're kind of flying under the radar and no one expects much from them. I think that's a good thing. And they'll probably surprise some folks. I think that the start of the season is going to be important uh, since three of the first four games are on the road, even though you know the fourth game is in L.A. And so we consider that a, a, a home game for the Raiders. But... Still, technically, it's a road game. So three out of the first four on the road, I think they've got to get off to a good start. And I do think they have a chance to get off to a good start. So uh, Josh Jacobs, that's one more little nugget that I wanted to bring to the table before we got into segment number two in the conversation I had with Dane Brugler from The Athletic. Uh, Vinny Bonsignor put out a piece on the RJ, the Las Vegas Review Journal, called There's a Growing Sense in League Circles that Josh Jacobs will be back with the Raiders before the season opener. But when exactly? And will he have enough time to be ready to play against the Denver Broncos. And that's really what it's all about. I believe he'll be back in time. I'm hoping he comes back sometime this week, if not this week, right after the Cowboy game. 
I think he needs a little bit of time. There's about three weeks before the season actually gets started. He needs a little bit of time to get hit. Uh, I don't think he's going to play in any preseason games. Didn't think he was going to play in any. But to get him in training camp and get a little bit of contact, just get him hit, just try to get him into game shape, I think helps in a major way. Head coach Josh McDaniels ever actually met with the media on Sunday by way of Zoom following the Rams game. And Vinny asked him about any updates on Josh Jacobs and how important it is for him to get into camp and get some of those hits reacclimated to getting some football action. Here's Josh McDaniels on Josh Jacobs. I don't have any new news on JJ. Um, and, you know, I mean, I, I would say I think that it's important for every player. Uh, this is a national, it's a national football league. So, it's not easy uh, to, uh, you know, go out there and just, you know, play games and and do it at the speed and and level that, uh, you know, you want to do it at unless you've really kind of had enough opportunity to get yourself ready to do that. Uh, we've talked, you know, uh, all year, you know, to our team about, you know, nothing carries over from one year to the next. You have to reestablish your uh, individual level of performance um, and collectively as a unit. Uh, and ultimately, as a team, we have to establish and reestablish ourselves in terms of what we're going to be about. So, um, you know, whether it would be JJ or somebody else, it's the same thing. You know, uh, everybody's got to uh, have an opportunity to to, to do that, uh, get reacclimated to the pace, the speed of things. Um, you know, but again, I have nothing. I have no new information on the whole situation. So there's head coach Josh McDaniels talking about Josh Jacobs and not having an update on him. So we'll see. Uh, when he arrives sooner rather than later, I'm hoping. I know Vic Tafer and Deshaun Reed from The Athletic both said that there's no update. There's nothing new when it comes to Josh Jacobs and his situation. He also kind of went to Twitter and basically shut down the thoughts that he's going to report anytime soon. But we'll see. Josh Jacobs is no dummy. He'll he'll get there in time to get that $10.1 million. I don't see him leaving any money on the table. I just think that that would be foolish. But the question is when he's going to show up. Not really if. And so I'm hoping, and this is just my hope, that it's sooner rather than later, but only time will tell when Josh Jacobs will show up. So that's all I got for you for segment number one. Went a little bit longer than I expected to, but that's all right. Coming up in segment number two, Dane Brugler from The Athletic. The conversation I had with him on Raider Nation Radio 920, Unnecessary Roughness on Monday, talking all things Aiden O'Connell. I'll get right to that after I tell you about the title sponsor, which is Game Time. And if you're trying to buy the tickets to your favorite events, you know it shouldn't be stressful. And sometimes here in Vegas, we'll have friends or family that come to town and it'll be right in time for a Raider game. And all of a sudden, I'll have to scramble and try to get some tickets. Well, game time is one that you can go to. It's the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you'll have. Forget planning months in advance. You don't have to do that. And I'm not good at that anyway. Game Times has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, and a whole lot more. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Right now, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms that apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to let you hear the conversation I had with Dane Brugler from The Athletic on Monday on my radio show. We talked all things Aiden O'Connell as on the podcast. I talked a lot about Aiden O'Connell and him sliding into the number two spot uh, behind Jimmy G uh, and right ahead of Brian Hoyer. Not that really the pecking order really matters, but I just think that Aiden O'Connell has shown that he's capable of being a backup if need be. So here's the conversation I had with Dane Brugler. We start off talking about his draft guide, the beast. He had Aiden O'Connell slotted in, in the, as a fourth round pick. So my first question to him is what was it that you saw in Aiden O'Connell's game that made you feel confident he'd be a fourth round pick? Well, I'll tell you at this time last year, uh, last summer was when I first really dove into O'Connell's tape uh, from the previous junior year at Purdue and I, I was just, I was okay, there's something different about this guy. Uh, in my summer preview last year of the quarterbacks, he was my top uh, second-ranked senior. I mean, I, I was high on him since going back to last summer. And then, of course, you know, he put in a, a maybe not a great senior year, but a good senior year at Purdue, his final year. Uh, but nothing that really shook my confidence in him as a player. I think that there's, there are some limitations there, and you see that pretty quickly. Uh, but it, it's what he can do uh, with, with his mind, the way he sees the field, uh, the way he can touch up every level of the field. 
And, and I think he's just a very confident guy. Like he, he doesn't matter what happened to play before he comes back and he keeps slinging the rock. So, um, hey, you know, this is a guy that hasn't been hyped up as the, you know, the guy uh, throughout his life. He, he wasn't a, he was more of a basketball player growing up. Uh, he started more games and uh, basketball than he did football in high school. Didn't start at quarterback till his senior year. Wasn't a, any type of big recruit. Um, he was going to go play Division Three uh, football until uh, Jeff Brom really made a push for him to uh, walk on at Purdue. Uh, he was the ninth string quarterback when he got there. So uh, this guy is really anything that he has gotten up to this point. It's because of his hard work and the way he's positioned himself and what he's done on the field. And so I think that the, the reason you know he had a fourth round grade for me and not higher was just because I do think there are limitations there that maybe put a cap on how good he can be in the NFL, uh, most notably uh, just a lack of uh, big-time athleticism. You know, he's just he's, he's not a statue, but he's just not a quick-twitch guy uh, in the pocket. And, and I think that's something that really bothered me in terms of maybe limiting just how good he can be at the next level. But I, at the very least, I, I really like his floor. I think that you're getting a guy that can be a really reliable backup from day one. He's going to play in the league for 10 years. Uh, and when he gets his chances to get on the field, he's not going to disappoint. You know, it's funny. When the Raiders drafted him, I thought that as, as well. Like, okay, that's probably going to be a glorified backup. And, of course, through two preseason games, and they're only preseason games, he's done really well. And a lot of Raider Nation is talking about him and excited about him. How much of the adversity that he's gone through in his life, as you mentioned, you know, being the walk-on, the ninth-string quarterback, how much has that really helped him develop his game and also develop it between the ears and, and be able to overcome situations? Yeah, and, you know, he's, like I said, he's had to work for everything he's got up to this point, you know, coming from uh, you know, not starting until his senior year of high school and then, you know, not being a big-time recruit and, uh, you know, really just fighting for it, uh, moving up the depth chart. And, and you know, he, there's been things that's gone on in his life. Uh, you know, his, his uh, uh, older brother passed away uh, last November. Um, you know, he, he is uh, married and, you know, he is a guy that is very mature. Uh, you know, he's an older player too. He, uh, uh, I think he's going to turn 25 next month or here in a couple weeks. So he is an older guy too. He's a little more mature than your average rookie. So he was ready for this moment to come in and, you know, really, uh, hit the ground running. Uh, now we have to hit the brakes a little bit. You know, this is the preseason, right. you know, the competition he's going up against. Uh, you know, we always have to preface that with any conversation about, you know, how well these guys are playing. But for a rookie to step, go, come in there and, I mean, he's been the best rookie quarterback easily uh, in the preseason. But, you know, what does that mean for the Raiders this season? Um, you know, with their quarterback position, um, you know, can he win over the coaches in the meeting rooms? Um, you know, is there any type of leash where – uh, on Jimmy and Garoppolo, where we could see uh, Ian O'Connell. I, I, I do. I, I'm just maybe my lack of faith in Garoppolo staying healthy. But I just once the Raiders drafted O'Connell, uh, I think the first thing that came in my mind was, oh, well, we're, we're going to see him start this year. Like that's just that that's a given. That's going to happen. And is it because of you know, Garoppolo not staying healthy, or uh, maybe O'Connell just being that good in between the uh, between games during practices during the week? that they want to give him a shot just to say, okay, what do we have in this guy? So as soon as he was drafted by the Raiders, you know, because that's obviously we talk about quarterbacks and prospects, you know, where you go and where you land is such a big part of the equation. And so when he landed with the Raiders uh, and that coaching staff with Coach McDaniels and the quarterback situation, I thought that was, you know, obviously a great fit for him, just a chance to get on the field and show what he has. Dane Brugler from The Athletic is our guest here on Raider Nation Radio 920, Unnecessary Roughness. You know, I've been talking throughout the course of the show today about him earning that number two spot. Right now it's Jimmy G, Brian Hoyer, and Aiden O'Connell. But And I don't want to overreact to two preseason games, but I feel like mm -hmm. this staff should have enough confidence that he could be the backup if need be. Do you, feel the, do you share those same feelings? Yeah, I think so. I, because I think a big part of being the backup is just getting the start already, right? It, it's not necessarily about – um, you know, obviously, if the you know, your starter gets hurt, backup goes in. But a big part of it is just preparing your quarterback, the starter, during the week, and uh, you know, in the meeting rooms, in the quarterback rooms, and you know, putting together game plans. You know, the backup's a big part of that. That that that's part of the responsibilities. And a guy like this with O'Connell, he's you know, the intelligence that he has, what he brings uh, from an intangible standpoint. Like I said, he's mature. He's already married. 
um, you know, talking to scouts that were at that Purdue program last year, they they used words like coachable and intangibles and a guy that was raised right. And, um, you know, he wants to be an NFL chaplain after his playing days. Like, that's, that's the type of guy you're getting. And so, uh, you know, it, he's not – even if he doesn't start the year as a backup, say they say, you know, we'll, we'll give the seniority to Brian Hoyer. He'll be the backup. O'Connell's the third. It's not like it's going to matter. It's not going to change anything for O'Connell. He's just going to keep showing up and – uh, putting his best foot forward, and when he does get that chance, uh, you know, I think that you know we'll see him do some pretty good stuff. What do you think he needs to work on the most to continue to improve and develop in the NFL? To put it in simplest terms possible, it's just understanding the throws he should and shouldn't make. Yeah, you know, there, there yeah. are times where, and maybe this comes from that Purdue system that he was in uh, with Coach Brom, where it's just push the ball down the field at all costs. Uh, a lot of half, half field reads. Uh, but, you know, he was very aggressive with his arm. And so there are some of those windows that, you know, they expire a little quicker in the NFL. And so, uh, you know, just understanding the throws he should and shouldn't make, taking care of the football. Um, you know, he, he had double-digit uh, interceptions each of the last two years. So this is a guy that's, you know, not afraid to push the ball downfield. And, you know, sometimes that can mean testing coverages. And so it's just when in the NFL where everything's so much faster and, you know, those – you have to be quicker with what you're reading. You have to anticipate. Um, and, and he can do that. He can throw guys open. You know, I think he has a good sense for coverages and what the defense is trying to do. But just understanding the throws he should and should not make, when to take chances, when to maybe live the, you know, play another play, that type of thing. Uh, just having a better understanding of that is where I think the coaches want to see a little more improvement out of him. Again, we're talking with Dane Brugler here from The Athletic on Raider Nation Radio 920, talking all things Aiden O'Connell. One thing that stood out to me about the young man was the fact that he stood in the pocket, and even mm-hmm. when the rush got near him, he didn't really flinch. he just go ahead and let the play develop and then deliver the ball, even taking a couple hits. Is that surprising to see from a rookie quarterback? Oh, I mean, you saw it in college. That's what he did. You know, He, he will stare down the gun barrel and make plays. Um, and this is coming from a Purdue offense where – there's a lot of five man protections. And so like he knew he didn't have uh, you know, a tight end helping block or a running back chip some of these blitzers. He he before the snap, he had to understand, okay, where is the pressure coming from? Uh, you know, what's my hot? What's uh, you know, do, how quick do I need to be in my progressions to get this ball up and out? So, uh, you know, I think he has a good sense for, you know, just that pocket presence and what he needs to do uh, to not take the sacks and uh, you know, he is a very poised player in the pocket, and that's something that showed consistently in college. And you know what? So far, so good uh, in the NFL. And so, you know, I, I think it's it's part of what makes him uh, just a more mature player is that he gets a good understanding of, uh, you know, where to go with the football. He trusts himself, that confidence. Uh, and and he's, he's not scared to, uh, you know, hang in there and give his receivers a little more time for that route to develop. No, he's not. You know, and again, through two preseason games, and I always have to say that because they're still preseason games. They're not right, the regular right. season. But, you know, so far, so good. And, you know, a lot of Raider Nation is fired up and thinks that he could be the potential starter. And I don't want to say that right now, but I think that maybe a year with, you know, Jimmy G ahead of him and him being the backup quarterback could potentially develop into something. Do you see in this system with the head coach that they have, Josh McDaniels, him eventually developing into a franchise quarterback? You know, I, I did not evaluate him as that type of quarterback, but hey, I will gladly come back on here and say, man, I was wrong. You know, <laughs> I, because I, like I said, I, I'm rooting for him. I, I hope he gets the chance. Um, I, I do. The, the lack of mobility does worry me a little bit, uh, just in terms of the second chance plays, uh, being able to scramble, extend. Uh, you know, it's just, it's part of playing uh, quarterback in the NFL. I mean, it, the the few that have not, you know, you think about the Tom Brady's and the. the those guys are more of the exception than the rule. Um, so can he uh, compensate for that? And I, I think he can, but to a point. And so uh, I, with me, I graded him as a uh, backup level player, spot starter, guy that can come in, help you win games. If your starter's out for two weeks, uh, it's not an automatic go in two. You right, know, right. He, he can get you one on one, maybe even two. And, you know, he, he is a guy that uh, is just a really quality player uh, to have on your roster having your quarterback room, he makes your team better. Uh, but to say he's going to be a starting quarterback that's going to help you go to the playoffs, I- I'm just I'm not there with him yet. But like I said, I am happy to come back on and say <laughs> I was wrong if he turns out to be that type of player. Yeah, there's nothing ever wrong with saying you're wrong. <laughs> I do it yeah, all the time. No. There's 
nothing wrong with saying you're wrong. And, you know, final question for you, Dane. As far as guys like Brock Purdy and now Aiden O'Connell and, and others, because, you know, Brock was drafted as the last player uh, in the 2022 draft, and did he kind of give a lot of guys that are later round picks, did he give them more hope that, you know what, this guy may be able to develop into a franchise quarterback? Because, look, look what that guy did. Yeah, I know. I think it, uh, it, you know, speaks obviously to the 49ers coaching staff and, and what they're able to do with, with him. Um, but, you know, it does make you maybe reevaluate a little bit of, okay, well, what did we miss on him that he's been so successful? And this is why going into year two with Brock Purdy, there's, there's a lot hanging on. Uh, this is a team expected to compete for uh, Super Bowls this year. And so what can he do in year two when defenses, they know what's coming with Brock Purdy? They, they have the tape. They, you know, with everything that happened last season. So uh, this would be a big step for Brock Purdy and to see what he can do and what does that mean for, you know, day three quarter. We saw more quarterbacks drafted on day three last year than we usually see. It was almost double digits. And so, you know, what does that mean for these quarterbacks? You know, Tyson Bajant in Chicago is doing a nice job this preseason. Um, you know, Seth and Bennett's getting some run with the Rams. I mean, there's a lot of day three quarterbacks that are fighting for spots. And, you know, Brock Purdy and what he did last year, it's hard to, it's hard to ignore that. So, you know, a guy like Aiden O'Connell, um, you know, I, I think that he, the Raiders got a good one. And I think that I was even a little surprised he fell in the fourth round. I thought someone might scoop him up there in the, in the late third or even in, earlier in the fourth round. But the, the Raiders are lucky he fell to him. I, I think he makes them a much better team. So there you go right there, Raider Nation. That was the conversation with Dane Brugler from The Athletic from my Monday radio show on Unnecessary Roughness, Raider Nation Radio 920, talking all things Aiden O'Connell. So – uh, you heard him say he'd love to come back and say that, hey, I was wrong. He's not just a backup. He's a franchise quarterback. Uh, but he just didn't have him pegged and evaluated like that. And he still doesn't because, again, it's two preseason games. So, obviously, the real season, the regular season, is what really matters. But, you know, so far, so good. All you can do is play the games that you have in front of you. And Aiden O'Connell's done well through two games. So what's on your mind? Well, we'll talk about it coming up in segment number three, your calls and texts, and even a tweet. The Locked On Raider Podcast voicemail line is 707-654-4693. We'll start off with a tweet, then we'll get to your calls and texts, and we'll do that after I tell you about eBay Motors. And our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long. Whether you're prepping for a draft or scouting the waiver wire, every week we're going to provide your, you players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So, with draft prep underway for the upcoming season, let's see who Vinny has picked out for us on this week's eBay Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. And we're talking wide receivers or tight ends here. He talks about Calvin Ridley, DJ Moore, and even former Raider Darren Waller. Let's talk about Darren Waller. He said, looking for a player to take in fantasy football drafts who will spark his new team's offense and also help you speed to victory? Then use luxury pick on Giants tight end Darren Waller. The former Raider is already riding in style again with Daniel Jones locked into him all throughout training camp and the preseason. The connection is strong enough already to believe Waller would go back to being a reliable cog at his position. Grab him after the top few tight ends are off the board. Vinny Iyer from Locked On Fantasy Football is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. With eBay Guaranteed Fit and over 122 million parts and accessories for your vehicle, right at your fingertips, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Air filters, brakes, batteries, taillights, alternators, shocks and struts. You name it, eBay Motors has it. And they'll make sure it's the right fit for your car. eBay Guaranteed Fit helps you understand exactly what part you need for your vehicle the first time. So, go forth. Switch gears. Crank the AC. Say goodbye to sweating if your ride needs a little fixing up. Because right now, you know you'll always be set up for success from the get-go. With eBay Guaranteed Fit. Everything you're for is just a click away. For the parts and accessories that fit your vehicle, just look for the green check. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices at ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. It's so funny. Everyone hits me up when they see me or talk to me and say, man, that let's ride part of that, that eBay spot is hilarious because I'm not talking about Russell Wilson. eBay guarantee fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Went a little long in the first two segments, so we're only going to have time for a couple calls and texts and a tweet, and we're going to go ahead and jump right into it right now, 707-654-4693. Let's start off with a tweet from Raider Rod from the 909. It says, hey, Q, it's been a long time since I messaged you. It's Raider Rod from the 909, still listening to the Locked On Raiders podcast every morning on my drive to work. Just want to congratulate you on your success. I just knew you were going somewhere from the beginning. Hope all is well with you and the family. As far as the Raiders go, I'm taking 
a one-game at a time approach. The bad taste from last year is still there. We look good winning the last two preseason games, so there's hope. I'll leave it at that and just win, baby. Raiders. That's from Raider Rod for the 909. And again, like Rich Gannon said, you heard him say it in segment number one, he's cautiously optimistic. That's where I'm at right now as well. Two preseason games are exactly that. Two preseason games, but it looks like it looks better than it looked last year in the preseason, and they went 4-0 in the preseason. But I think that so far through two games, what they've been able to do, the way they've looked, the execution of it has looked better. Again, my opinion, but it's looked better than it did a season ago. So uh, with the Ravens losing on Monday, they had a 24-game preseason uh, win streak going. Now the Raiders are actually the longest win streak team in the preseason with six wins, right? The Josh Jacobs or Josh McDaniels, excuse me, is six to zero as a head coach with the Raiders in the preseason. So John Harbaugh was not happy after his team lost, but again, they snapped a 24 game winning streak going all the way back to 2015. So uh, there you go. The Raiders are now the sole uh, first place team as far as the win streak goes in the preseason, but the preseason doesn't matter. It's about the regular season. But Raider Rod, thanks for that text or that tweet. I, did, I say, uh, I appreciate you. Next up is a call from Jacob in Fresno. He's calling to talk about Aiden O'Connell, what he has thought about him so far, and speaks on the Raiders' defense as well. Here he is, Jacob in Fresno. Hey, Q. Jacob in Fresno here. Um, man, I'm, i i got to admit, Aiden O'Connell, not bad, you know? I'm, I'm not crowning him anything yet because it's still only preseason and you're not seeing the absolute best defenses out there. But overall, he's managed the offense really, really well. He's, you know, the, as long as there's a good, strong running game going, I think that he could develop into something, you know, and we'll see what happens. But um, I, I thought, it, thought it kind of funny. The moment that Brian Hoyer was out there and after a few series, there were so many tweets by the Raiders beat writers about, okay, we've seen enough of Brian Hoyer, which – I think but then in those two because he's been in the league so long, it's like we don't need to see him anymore. We know what he can do, and we'd like to see Aiden O'Connell. And I, I would hope the very last preseason game, it's all Aiden O'Connell just to see what he can do, throw up some little bit different stuff at him and see how he can manage, you know, and really prep him to maybe be the backup. So we'll, we'll see. But overall, impressed so far. The, what I'm real impressed with, too, is defensively, even the twos and threes are flying to the ball, and that's really impressive. You know, and granted, they're, they're guys trying to make the team, but it's it's still good stuff to see in preseason that all these guys that are playing twos and three spots are really giving their best efforts. But uh, have a good one, Q. Thank you so much for the call, my man. I appreciate you. And, yeah, O'Connell's been a pleasant surprise, right? I'm intrigued on how he's going to continue to develop. He opened my eyes for sure. I wasn't sure what to expect, but now I, you know, want to see more I keep saying like I can't wait to see this third preseason game because I want to see some more I don't know how much he's going to play but I'm definitely excited to see him in action just to see what he could do so far he's done a very good job so uh this 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 offense looks like can cl- click Jimmy G looks like he's going to be good as long as he's healthy and the defense it's flying around as you mentioned it's making plays and I could definitely appreciate that so Jacob thanks so much for that I do appreciate you and uh let's go ahead and let's get one more text in. I know we're running short on time. This text is from JV Raider. So what's up, Q? JV Raider from Georgia. I have a question. And we're are we not even considering the possibility of Aiden O'Connell starting week one? We can keep talking about backup over Hoyer. If he plays anything like he has week one and two against the Cowboys this week, we have to talk about start over Jimmy G, don't we? If not, how short is the leash on Jimmy G? Let's say his play is mediocre after four games and we're one and three. When do we throw our young talented rookie out there? If he impresses again next week, we should really consider giving the job to O'Connell to lose rather than just handing it to Jimmy G. Sounds familiar with Jimmy G and Trey Lance, doesn't it? Aiden O'Connell is better than Trey Lance, and it doesn't even look close. What are your thoughts, Q? Love the show. Keep doing what you do. JV Raider out. And JV Raider, thanks so much for the text. I appreciate you. And no, I don't think that there's consideration right now for Aiden O'Connell as the starter. I, I just I don't see that. I know that it sounds good based off what we've seen in two games, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves as far as – the two games go. Let's let's keep in perspective that it is a preseason game. And so far, to be honest about it, so far Jimmy G's only played one drive, but he looked really good. <laughs> right? He looks really good. And so I think that, you know, it's it's not out of the question that he could end up getting a start at some point this season, but that's due to Jimmy G being injured. Now, if, you know, the first I think it would have to be more than the first four games, I think that you'd probably have to give him the first seven or eight games of the season, you know, almost the halfway point 
before you say Aiden O'Connell. Hell, they might even go all the way to the bye week, and that's week 13, right? They might even go that far. I think it's week 13, right? Or it's right after week 13. It's, it's, yeah, it's week 13. So they might even go that far before they make a change to the quarterback. I just I think that this is, and this is just my opinion, so I could be wrong. I think it's Jimmy G's team, at least for this year, as long as he's healthy. And I hope that we don't see Aiden O'Connell at all. That means that Jimmy G is healthy and he's playing well. That's an ideal situation for me. But, again, if they get off to a rough start and things don't look like it's improving, maybe at some point they say, all right, it's time to see what the rookie the rookie has. Look, they uh, they put Jared Stidham in there, what, the last two weeks of the season in 2022. They sat Derek Carr down after Christmas so or after Christmas Eve. So there's there's that. I would think that they'd probably wait till the bye week before they make a, a move. But I'm not in the head of Josh McDaniels. I'm not in the head of Dave Ziegler. So I can't say that for 100% certain. But, I mean, I guess it's a good conversation. But right now, there's definitely no conversation as far as I'm concerned about Aiden O'Connell starting week one. I don't think that's even a question. And I believe it's Jimmy G's team until further notice. But thank you so much for that text. I do appreciate you. It's always good for some conversation. Coming up tomorrow, Jordan in Oregon got a call from him. We got a text from Stabler's Ghost. Brian in Pittsburgh got a call. We got a text from Scott. Plus more, we'll have news and notes of the day. The Raiders are back at practice today. Uh, it's not going to be till later, so I won't be in attendance. They don't practice till 1230, and the, they, uh, the players meet with the media at 230, so I'll already be on my radio show by then. So I won't be at the facility, but but, of course, I'll bring you any kind of news and notes that come out of that, and we'll have plenty of conversation here as well. So until then, Raider Nation, take care of yourself, take care of your family, love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.